I get this question quite often from teams who are starting with Scrum and sometimes even in teams that are in organizations adopting full on safe. Do you need a sprint zero? What is even a sprint zero? So in this video, we're going to look into that. What is sprint zero? Do you really need it? How it came to be? You know, what's the story behind it? And of course, why not? Let's look into pros and cons of adopting this strategy. Let's dive right in. Welcome or welcome back, my friend. My name is Petula. I'm your host here at All Things Agile. Let's start by cutting to the chase. No suspense needed. Do you need a sprint zero when you're starting with your team, whether it's a scrum team or any sort of framework that you're using? The answer is no. Always watch out when people say the word need. So that's a clear indication in there. Now, it wouldn't be so interesting if it wasn't nuanced, right? So let's then look into more details so that you can then gain insights on would you use? Is it interesting? Is it useful to have a sprint zero? So let's start with the story behind it. Surprisingly, the term Sprint Zero doesn't actually come from Scrum. I think it was first used by folks on the XP, Extreme Program side of things. And it's sometimes called the Sprint Zero or, you know, Iteration Zero, Inception Sprint and things of the nature. And the objective behind that was to get some quality items on the product backlog and provide some sort of minimal environment that allows you to have good quality of code coming out and write a real piece of code, no matter how small. And then some people went on to suggest that the sprint zero should be as short as possible, doing something that most people condemn in this day and age when you talk about sprints or iterations, which is varying the length of the iterations, which isn't a problem at all. And it's part of the story on how this idea came to be. So another way of seeing the sprint zero is some people like to look at it as a planning iteration. So you come up with a list of all prioritized features and stories with some estimates, a release plan that assigns the features and the stories to the iterations and a high level application architecture, which is basically how the, the whole thing would be implemented when put together a general idea. So the story might be a little bit imprecise, but it's short and sweet. It has nothing to do with Scrum. And in fact, it was invented or conceptualized by the folks in the world of extreme programming in the early 2000s. It comes from the iteration zero, which was, you know, a new name for what used to be called ZFR, or I think it was Ziffer that they used to say, and it just meant zero feature release. So it was basically a moment to make sure that all the stakeholders involved knew that in this moment, when this iteration is done, there will be no actual code produced. It's for us to use that time to do other kind of stuff. And apparently it was Mike Hill that introduced that idea in one of his courses about extreme programming in the early 2000s. As you can see, the idea of a sprint zero is really not a bad one, right? It can actually be rather useful but it's not without its problems. But first, let's look at the good things at the positive side of having a sprint zero. One is that you definitely relieve the pressure of just getting started producing, producing, producing projects, products, whatever it is that you're doing should have a nice start where you have the time to sit and have a conversation about the why of things and also about the how of things. So really just having a space for that kind of understanding is huge. And I'm pretty sure you are aware that once the team starts on the rhythm of a sprint and iterations, more often than not, managers and some stakeholders get agitated when you have those meetings with the whole team involved and there's a lot of talking and apparently nothing being delivered. So it really takes off the pressure and the team can start on a good note. So on a sprint zero, things that you can be doing is the full team workshop where you define the team agreement, you know, the, the charter on how we want to work together as a team, 
setting up all our environments, technology sometimes, you know, is a beast. So you get time to do all of that preparation. And yes, it's possible some of the organizing pieces of the backlog and maybe aligning a few more things with stakeholders, or at least that's the, the idea and the space that the Sprint Zero will be creating. The Sprint Zero then become an idea that is especially interesting for organizations that are not really that used to working in more agile approaches. And that allows the team the space and the time to really get started on a good note. Now let's move to the cons, the things that are not so great and even the wrong impressions that the approach of a Sprint Zero can cause. The first one is related to backlog, prioritization, and even the why of things. It's not uncommon that when misunderstood, the sprint zero is all the time that you get either as a product manager or the team with a product manager to actually sit for the first time understanding how the product fits in the rest of the organization, understanding product market fit, creating a full backlog for things. Uh, so it's really a lot of work can find in a small amount of time. And all of these decisions on why this product is relevant, why now, why this team, what are the main chunks of work, all that ideally requires some previous study. And that is not the time to just get this done for the first time with the team already lined up. Ideally, you want your product manager to already have a lot of answers to give and not just being bombarded with questions that everybody feels like they're going to be discovering as they go. The second con is maybe a wrong message that is sent that forming a team and preparing a team is a once and done thing. So all the time that you took to create your team charter and to set up your infrastructure, that's all you ever get for as long as the team live. And as a great coach, you know that your team will constantly be requiring to rethink their processes and their, their behaviors and how they work, really sitting together and look at, looking at past performance to then improve for future iterations. You know that the architecture and even the tools that we use for producing great code or whatever product is that you create, those things are always being updated and improved and they, they need time outside of just delivering features. So it's, it's really, you know, if it can give the idea that you create a space to which you can never come back when in fact, it's a constant thing. It's great to have had the sprint zero, a bigger time to start on the right foot, but it doesn't mean that every single sprint, you won't be using some of your time to continuously improving your ways of working. That is very key. The third one is then perfectionism. I feel that Sprint Zero kind of like awakens the perfectionist in everybody. And then there is this idea that you must be entirely ready before you can start delivering something. And then it becomes hard to define like, what does ready really mean? So you might be thinking that you need all possible information before you can attack a user story and deliver on that. Or because, you know, your CICD could be missing a step here and there. And then, you know, it's not as fast as you could. It doesn't contain all the possible tests that you would want. And then you think like, well, we can't proceed. It's not, it's not good yet. We are not ready yet. So it can allow for a lot of procrastination and that setup phase can become very long, especially if you are allowing your sprint zero to be as elastic as you need. And that brings me then to a final piece, which is it can imply a sprint zero can sometimes wrongfully imply that you can have sprints with no goal. And whether you're using iteration sprints, or whatever that is, as soon as you have a cycle, you have to have an objective for it. And let's say that maybe the objective is related to only the, you know, the inner workings of setting up your backlog or your um, technical infrastructure. And that is totally fine, but you have to make clear the objective because you, at some point you have to be able to say, check, it's done, it's good enough, let's move on. So summarizing, 
No, you don't need a sprint zero. It can't be a very positive thing for you if you decide to use it, but be aware of the pros and cons, which makes me wonder, did I forget anything? Let me know in the comments if there's something that you see in sprint zeros that's very common that I didn't mention here. I'd love to hear. In any case, my friend, this video ends here. I hope it was useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.